What a privilege to be here tonight um, and an honor to talk about Dan Jansen. What processes maintain high species diversity in ecosystems like this diverse tropical forest and allow all of these different species to coexist? How can we recognize cryptic biodiversity when one species, what looks like one species, actually is many different species? Did extinct uh, Pleistocene megafauna, like these gonfafiers that once roamed Central America tens of thousands of years ago, contribute to the traits of seeds of trees that we find growing in those forests today? And what happens when you dump a thousand truckloads of orange peels onto degraded tropical pastures that cannot or will, that are not regenerating? Now, what do these questions have in common? Well, University of Minnesota alum Dan Jansen has asked these questions, and he has some answers. This is Cochlospermum vitifolium. Um, it's a tree in Central America. The local or the common name in Costa Rica is the poro poro tree. Um, its habitat is tropical dry forests, and it's an early successional tree. Um, you find it regrowing, you find it in uh, disturbed areas or in habitats where forest is regrowing following abandonment from grazing or from agriculture. This is what the seeds of Poro Poro look like. And to me, these seeds are like Dan Jansen's ideas. Some of them are fuzzy. Some of them are sticky, but these seeds are wind dispersed. Um, just like Dan Jansen, these seeds are cast into the wind. Dan Jansen casts his ideas into the wind far and wide. Just like these seeds, some of them do not germinate. <laughs> but many of them do, some of them do. And as they grow, they become early successional trees that lay the foundation for mature successional trees um, and mature ideas that other people latch onto and they, they, they develop. I would venture to say that Dan Jansen is probably one of the most influential tropical biologists alive. So at this point you're asking, so what does someone who works in Costa Rica have in common with Minnesota? And that's a good question. Um, Dan Jansen grew up in Minneapolis. And as a kid in Minneapolis, by the time he was in ninth grade, he had identified, he'd learned to identify all of the animals, all of the, uh, the plant species growing in his backyard. And he was particularly captivated by a tray of butterflies that he found at his local library. And so when his family presented him with the opportunity to go on a car trip to Mexico, he jumped at this opportunity. Um, and that began, that began really a lifelong love affair with tropical biology. Um, but as a practical young man, he enrolled in the University of Minnesota and he enrolled in civil engineering. Uh, he thought this was sort of a safe bet, a safe career. Um, and one day, I guess he was in his sophomore year, he was walking across campus, not so far from where we are right now, and a storm was brewing. And in fact, I think the student union, which is this building right now, got struck by lightning. Dan was dashing away to get out of the path of this storm, and he ran into the nearest building on campus. As he rushed in to escape the storm, that put him face to face with a glass case that had a stuffed wood duck. This was a pivotal moment in the life of young Dan Jansen. Um, he was awestruck. He was staring at this stuffed wood duck. And a biology professor emerged from his office, and he invited Dan in. And they started talking. And then he invited Dan to attend a lecture he was giving on guinea pig genetics. So Dan attended this lecture, and he had an epiphany. He was wasting his life studying civil engineering. What he really wanted to do and what he has done ever since that moment was to be outside observing life. So one example of a Dan Jansen seed that has taken root, that has, that has uh, grown and developed um, is an idea that has launched 100 to 200 dissertations. 
Um, this is asking the question, what processes maintain biodiversity in species-rich ecosystems like this diverse tropical forest? Uh, this picture here shows a seedling carpet of seedlings of the species uh, Dipteryx panamensis, and the seedlings are growing underneath their parent tree. They're growing in the shadow of their parent tree. And in a very um, influential paper that Dan published in 1970s, he realized, or he, um, um, he, where did that go? Yes, uh, Dan Jensen realized that, um, that the abundance of species-specific pathogens or diseases or predators, um, insects, animals that might eat these trees, the pressures that these um, that these put on seedlings would be strongest near a conspecific adult tree. So underneath the parent tree. Mm. And over time, what this would lead to, this pathogen pressure underneath the parent tree, would lead to distance or density-dependent mortality, such that seedlings that had dispersed farther away from the parent tree would suffer less from these diseases um, or herbivory, and then perhaps have a higher chance of survival. Now, you may be thinking, well, how can a little bit of disease or a little bit of herbivory actually affect a whole cohort? of seedlings. Um, this is a picture from a, a Nancite tree um, in the forest where Dan Jansen works in Guanacaste, Costa Rica. And you can see here the effects of a species-specific caterpillar, which has raised, basically scoured this leaf material um, and, and removed every leaf from this Nancite tree. And the tree in the background, a tree of a different species, remains untouched. So this theory, these ideas have been codified in what is known as the Janssen-Connell hypothesis. So Janssen is one half of this, this hypothesis. Um, and they summarized here in this conceptual model. So here on the left side, you have a seed shadow, which shows that the abundance of seedlings, of seeds and seedlings, decreases with distance away from a parent tree. The other line that you can see is the probability of survival. So if you are a seed that falls at some distance from the parent tree, your chances of suffering from species-specific pathogens or diseases are less. The sweet spot then, where seedling, um, um, where seedling survival is maximized, is at some distance away from a tree of the, an adult tree of the same species. And what this means then is that in the, the red arrow here is an area, a spatial area in a forest where species, of a, a species that are of a different species from the parent tree can come in, they can occupy that space. This is one mechanism that allows coexistence of many species in a, in a diverse ecosystem like a diverse tropical forest. This is just one of Jansen's ideas one of his seeds which has really taken root. Um, and undoubtedly, Dan Jansen leaves um, a huge legacy in ecology. But I would argue that his most enduring legacy is not his academic record, but it is this piece of ground. Um, Dan has been hugely instrumental in establishing and protecting and conserving tropical forests in Costa Rica, like this marine ecosystem, like this mangrove system that fringes the ocean, like this tropical dry forest that you find in the lowlands, like these humid forests and these cloud forests that you find on top or, or flanking volcanoes. All of these habitats are conserved in the Guanacaste Conservation Area. This is where Dan spends about half of his time when he's not at the University of Pennsylvania. Dan Jansen's influence, though, extends far beyond the forests of Costa Rica. It extends to the people. Um, it, expend, it extends to the local people living in Guanacaste. It extends to, uh, to all of Costa Rica. Um, and here you see Dan Jansen. He's taking part in a research open house in 2012. And this brought together researchers from many different countries. Uh, it brought together the staff of the Guanacaste Conservation Area. And it brought together students 
from all academic stages in their careers, including undergraduate students from the University of Minnesota. So I think this really is a story coming full circle. In summary then, Dan Jansen, he is a firebrand. He is visionary. And my guess, my suspicion is that 200 years from now, when you're, you know, when people are opening up introductory ecology textbooks, they will be reading about the academic work of Dan Jansen. But even if they don't, people will be walking through a mature tropical forest in northwestern Costa Rica, and they will say to themselves, you know, didn't this used to be a Poro Poro forest 200 years ago? Thank you. <laughs> and I'm sorry to say that Dan regretfully could not be here with us tonight. He's off fighting the good fight. <laughs>